I first started using a virtual classroom or a webinar environment for online office hours. I thought that was a really good way to test out the software and for me to become familiar with how this works, how this process works. So uh, I started by just telling my students, here's a URL, click on it if you want to join my online office hours and I will give you um, the opportunity to ask questions. Generally, they, they're done through a chat window. Students type in their questions and I respond using audio and video. I've often given students the option of using audio and video, but they're very reluctant to use it. They often seem to prefer typing in their questions. So that uh, worked really well. It was extremely popular. The thing that I think they liked the most is it's not just me talking, but I can easily show them PowerPoint slides or do a software demonstration or a web page. Anything at all can be shown, uh, shared with them so that they get a, a much more richer experience out of it than just hearing me answer a question. So once I was comfortable with that, uh, with the webinar environment, I started experimenting with using it in class as well, in a regular face-to-face -face class. So what I was doing was that uh, at the beginning of the class, I would open the webinar virtual room, and students had the option of either attending the class in person or they could attend it online. And I would uh, try to make sure that students in both uh, environments felt comfortable asking questions. I would monitor the chat room in the online environment and I would answer their questions during the regular live lecture in exactly the same way that I would ask uh, of a student or answer a student that was right in front of me. So this gave students a chance to access the lecture portion of it live in person or online, as well as then I was recording the online webinar and letting students uh, access that again later. So they had these different options in, in terms of how they could attend the lecture in person, online, synchronously or asynchronously. And it's been uh, extremely popular. Students really love having that flexibility and also that, that students know what works best for them. Some students really prefer to be uh, in the classroom face to face. Other students are very happy to learn online, and so I feel it's really helpful and useful for them to be able to have those choices. There are 100 to 150 students, so there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the chat box. It's really quite dynamic. It's, I've, I've recorded some, I've, I've taken a few of them and saved them just because they look so great. You scroll through them and you just, you, you just go, wow, that's really, you know, some really healthy dialogue that's going on there. And there's some students in the class that provide a lot of value. Even student, the peer-to-peer -peer thing is, they provide a lot of value to the class. They're answering all their, their friends, their peers' questions on their regular, just keep going and going and stuff. And some of them, I mean, in my, this is a second year class and there are students in second year, third year, and fourth year, and even in, you know, beyond taking these courses. So the senior students, the, the content is maybe even, you know, old hat to them. They understand it. They're in there to get the credit that they never got and maybe to learn some advanced stuff. But you're teaching at the second year level, so they're, y y we are benefiting from, from having those students in the class and they get to, they get to help their you know, less experienced or less knowledgeable peers out a lot. It comes out in the chat box really, really clearly. I find, found, and my experience continues to be that students that are typically really shy will really open up in this context. I also, what I'm really love about using this is that it's multiplayer in that people are communicating on task all the time. And so um, there can be multiple conversations going on at once. They can make use of different areas in the environment. So one group can work in one area of the campus. Another group can go somewhere else. They have access to uh, online tools such as the web render, so they can do research, pull up a Google, pull up a YouTube. They have access to a collaborative drawing surface. It's amazing, and every time I see the students use it, new things play out, and I just find the space is getting richer and richer. Uh, when I get frustrated with it, maybe in terms of quality of sound or voice problems, I think that it's just been a disaster and the students are still really excited about what's happened. So it doesn't seem to bug them at all. I use video games in my teaching and I use them not so much, hey, here's a game, go play, you'll learn something about the French Revolution, but rather as 
a way of showing students how digital media in general, or anything that's mediated through a computer, has various rules. And it's these rules and how they interact that create the experience that we engage with. And that's easiest to see with a video game. When you play a video game well, the thing that the video game teaches you is how to play the game. So if you are good at playing that game, you've internalized those rules and you've internalized that worldview of how the world should work. And this is one of the reasons why there's always these moral panics about video games. But if you turn that around and say to students, all right, this is the understanding of history that we want to communicate to people. How would we encode that in a video game? The students begin to see just how powerful the, algorithm, the algorithms are that, that mediate a lot of our experience right now. You do need to pause and provide time and opportunities where you do turn your attention to it. So just like you might pause in a, in a live face-to-face -face class and say, are there any questions or or you even pose a question to students for them to put their hand up and answer, you do the same thing asynchronously. And then you spend time exclusively on the discussion board and not on just, just lecturing. So that was, that's been my personal strategy, how I overcome it. And it tends to work very well. Students kind of, um, they understand that you're not paying attention. And even if they pose a question, oh, I didn't get that, or Can, what did he say? So other students answer for you. Other students answer them. So it's a, that's why I, I, I said uh, it's a very healthy thing that goes on in this, the, the chat box. The students are just helping each other learn. What did he say or, or how do you spell that or something like that? Students answer each other and, and I really like that. And then I turn and focus and ask them, are there any questions? Do you need anything clarified? Or you pose a question, does anyone know this? Or, and you follow the discussion board for a while.